Welcome back to 8 Minutes to Chew On. Our service times on a Sunday are at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 5 p.m. If you would like more information, you can visit thebarn.co.za. Let's get into it. Welcome back to 8 Minutes to Chew On. Pastor Nick, a great sermon series. And we've just started uh, looking at God's intervention throughout biblical history. And so, um, Pastor Will, I've shared on Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so, Nick, one of the, a big theme that was coming out of yesterday was that God's word has got a massive part to play. And so something that I want to ask you is how does believing in the absolute authority of God's word, uh, how, does it, how does that affect our belief uh, in terms of the whole of the creation? Yeah. Look, I, I, it's a great question because the reality is, Calvin, if I say I believe in the absolute authority of God's word, but I'm not sure I believe in creation mm. as God's word uh, describes it, then um, then those two statements don't match. Mm. You know, I either believe God's word or I don't believe God's word. You see, I think the challenge we sit with is um, when we bombarded with scientists and other uh, other worldviews around creation, um, we seem to think because uh, scientists uh, can say they've got evidence for certain things mm. that we now must doubt God's word. I, I don't think we should define our faith by a world system that's trying to explain mm. something, but through a biblical view that mm. the Bible teaches. Yeah. And so uh, what I mean with that is that it's very difficult to say I'm a Christian who believes in the Bible, but I don't believe in creation mm. or any Noah's Ark or, or any of these stories, the crossing of the Red Sea, Jericho's walls coming mm. down, you know, Jesus walking on water. You can't say, well, scientifically, I can't believe that and say, say you're a Christian because then what parts of the Bible do you believe? Mm. And what parts of the Bible don't you believe? And what parts of the Bible do you put into practice? And what parts of the Bible don't you put into practice? Mm. Now, I suppose the first response people have was then, can I believe the Bible? Yeah, but that's, uh, that, that's not the right response at all. The right response should be, well, then I'm going to believe the, the accuracy and the authenticity and the validity of the Word of God mm. over everything else it doesn't bring into question the word of god it brings for me it brings into question the the world view around these things and so the question about what power should 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 the word of god have in in these in interpreting these things i think absolute power mm. we either believe the word mm. as it's written by god as the authority of faith and practice or we don't yeah. you know we i don't think i think it's so dangerous i think that's why there's so much confusion today about god's word because um, God created. Mm. The Bible says in the beginning, from nothing, mm. God created. Mm. Now, how that all happened, I, I think we, we, we are okay to, to debate how that all happened. But what's not in question is that God created. Yeah. God yeah. created. From nothing, He created. And everything we see is because God created mm. it. And, um, and, and like I said, the method God used, yeah, sure, we can debate that. Mm. But who did it and, and who's, who's accountable for that? That's God. Yeah. And I believe that because that's what the Word of God mm. says. And and that's the power. It should be the authority that we believe. Everything else should try and fit into mm. that. But we don't question God's Word yeah. because because man's view doesn't fit into that. Mm. So Yeah. Well, that's good. That's mm. good. Uh, just as you were speaking, I was reminded, Apostle Love shared the word yesterday, bara, mm. which uh, speaks of God creating from nothing. Mm. And so if we believe that God has done this miraculous work, because His word tells us mm. to, how do you and I, as Christians, as believers, how should we respond to creation, mm. to understanding uh, and believing that the word holds all absolute truth? Mm. How do we respond to that? I, th I think creation is one of the most exciting doctrines there is in the Bible for, for many reasons. Number one is it tells us that God can take from nothing mm. and make something that is so beautiful mm. and, and so in order and so excellent that and, and that should give you and I so much encouragement about life and mm. this God we serve because we come to him with these broken situations where, where there's absolute chaos or we you know there might even be nothing mm. you know but he created this world. Mm. What can he do in your life? What yeah. can he do in your circumstances? Powerful stuff, you know, because, and it's through creation we start to understand just, just who God is. And so we see just how God, again, like I said, you know, the order that God brought in. You mm. know, God can bring order into our lives. The chaos, you know, he, he turned all that void, this, this void planet that was dark into a planet that had life, you know. Mm. And so when you take those concepts, out of the creation story and you actually apply them into your own life you, you realize that you serve we serve an amazing mm -hmm. god 
We serve a God that can take dead things and make them alive. We serve a God that takes chaos and brings order. We serve a God that from nothingness can bring this universe that man just can't understand. We, we try and we, you know, we're trying to, to get to grips with, with, but we can't even get to grips with the size of the universe. Mm. But, you know, and, and uh, that should just encourage us. Yeah. You know, it must, must, must excite us about the God we serve mm. and, and putting our faith and trust in Him. You know, because of a story like creation. Mm, mm, it's good. Here's a question mm. that I have for you. Is in the original text, it, the word Elohim mm. is used. And it speaks of the word, when it's translated, it says gods. Mm. Speaking of a plural. Mm. Here's a question. And I, I think the, the answer is quite straightforward. But I think it's something good for us to chat through. Is, is it one God or do we serve gods plural? Mm. What, 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 what is the exact yeah, meaning yeah. of that? Yeah, so if, if, if we define it within the Bible, mm -hmm. the fullness of the Bible, we, we understand that to be the Trinity. Mm -hmm. So we serve one God of, of three persons, mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The New Testament is very clear that um, Jesus was very much part of the creation mm -hmm. process. Even in, in um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it says the Holy Spirit hovered mm -hmm. on the depths of the waters. And so when you look at the fullness of the Bible, you see that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. were part of the creation process. And so Elohim, God's, is, is, is a fantastic, you know, it makes us understand that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit were actively involved in the creation mm -hmm. process. So uh, we don't serve multiple gods, God's but serve. we serve one God. In three persons. persons. Yeah. No, yeah. Good. Amen. <laughs> but I'm uh, so glad to have you join us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you potentially on yeah. Sunday. Come and join us. Keep watching us online. And have a blessed week.